So I'm having the great pleasure to be sitting here with a very, very special person for the network. Uh, this is Mr. Kari Valros, and he is uh, the European ambassador of OneCoin. So he is somebody who drives actually the network in Europe, be it the Scandinavian countries, Germany, UK, but also Russia and Kazakhstan, which are very important markets for us actually. So Kari, how have the last months been for you? Oh, where could I be? Where could I start? So first of all, I'm very happy to be here with you with the new fantastic office. But the um, yeah, since I since I started my uh, my travel as an ambassador, um, it has been an amazing journey for me. Um, I've been a kind of a rock star in this industry <laughs> long time, but actually this is uh, uh, created me uh, first time in my life to be a little bit humble, but absolutely honorable. To, to, to have to work with the people because I never seen such so many happy people in my life ever. So uh, wherever I arrive, people are happy and smiling and very polite and uh, it feels like a big family which is being created all around. So it's been an amazing experience so far. So I know you want to ask me some questions, but before we do this, I want to ask yeah. you one. Uh, we all know that I'm more a financial person and not so much in the network, but um, Share with me, why do you think people like OneCoin so much? What is the reason that they get excited by the concept and uh, like it? Um, I think first thing is because there are no demands. It's, you know, you can join and you, you are not asked to do anything. That is something that people are attracted to. And once they get the right information, which is, by the way, not really available, because there is so many wrong information, but once you give them the right information, it's so simple and clear and understandable and uh, I think because there is no demand and people see that they, they belong something, mm -hmm. they belong something bigger and, uh, uh, and this, is, this is how I think it is, the most important thing. Well this makes me of course very very happy. Now you want to ask me a few questions so go ahead. <laughs> well you know um, uh, of course as in, uh, I work basically in Europe, Europe and CIS so uh, what Europe means to, to OneCoin? Well, you know, Kari, we started, actually, OneCoin was, when, when we started, it was strongest in Hong Kong and in China. So we opened the first office uh, in Hong Kong, and we received huge support from these markets. China is a very, very interesting country. They love innovations, they love uh, cryptocurrency, and they supported us in the beginning very, very much. Then. Um, when I speak about cryptocurrency and the users of cryptocurrency, I believe the emerging markets will be the users actually of cryptocurrency, not so much Europe, because um, Europe is spoiled. You know, if I want to send money from Bulgaria to Sweden, it's very fast. Yeah, it goes really, really fast. Or the guys from Germany to UK, it is not that difficult. Like, for example, from Singapore to India. But um, what for me is special about Europe is. Um, Europe normally are the earliest adopters to any technology. Very, very sophisticated people who understand innovation, who are the first ones trying it out. So whenever they get excited about something, it gets quite big actually in, uh, in the world. All the iPhones and all this, they started in the US, but the Europeans also like this a lot. And um, I think the European market currently gives us huge support to roll out to the emerging markets. Even if they do not use the cryptocurrency so much, uh, um, they, they practically enable all these people who will join later in Africa and in um, other markets to, to use OneCoin. For example, let's say you hold 10,000 OneCoins and in three years you decide to, you know, to sell a part of this. Your buyers most probably will come all from emerging markets because these people, they do not want to buy the currency as an investment, they want to buy it as a payment system as a carrier of value. So for example, maybe some Indian person will buy 100 one coins from you in Singapore to be able to send this 100 uh, one coins to his wife in India. And this is why I think Europe is extremely important. You cannot build a global currency, fast borderless payments without Europe. We are one of the most developed markets out there and uh, I have huge support here. Um, a lot of the leaders come from Europe and um, I think um, this is one of the most important markets that we have, actually. All right. Well, um, I'm working in an area that is 
pretty much known as a wealthy area. Mm -hmm. Europeans are a wealthy country and also Russia, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, right. it's really wealthy countries. Uh, and they asked me the questions, well, I know, I know how I answer, but what is it? Because they are, they are limiting the coin sales. So what is your answer to that, that why we are limiting the coin sales? So now, drastically, ah, how, I see. How, how they think that they're not so your question somebody is, wants to sell more right. coins. So your question is, um, some of us mine coins and they go to the internal exchange yeah. and some of us sell coins and buy coins. Yeah. So um, uh, as one coin, as I say, is one year old, first of all, it's not like Bitcoin, it is not a liquid market yet. So it means that there might be a day where we have huge demand for coin sales or huge demand for coin buying. And uh, this is why we as a company always say buying and selling the coin should never be a reason why you join. The coin actually needs to be used. So we need to have some time, and I say always it's three to five years until we really manage to have a usability and a liquid market where you can do unlimited sales and buying actually on the market. Until then, uh, Kari, if you do not have limits, for example, what can happen is that one person with um, a huge sales order or a huge buy order can distort the price a lot. And this is what happens to Bitcoin often. I don't know if you see all this going up, down in a very, very big amount. And uh, this is called volatility and we do not want to have a very big volatility for our coin. People do not understand how it can be that Bitcoin today is worth $500 and tomorrow only $400 within a day. This is very disturbing and if you are a merchant who takes Bitcoins, you don't want to have this. Because you want to be sure that if you take a Bitcoin today, it will not be valued 20% or 30% less tomorrow. Of course, you're very happy if it's valued 30% more, but it goes both sides. Absolutely, yeah. So cryptocurrency is uh, one of the riskiest assets actually out there. High volatility, low liquidity on the markets. So for us to achieve a high liquidity, we need to work first on the value creation of the coin, on the liquidity, and it will take time. So all these people, why we have created this exchange? We have created it so people can learn to trade it, but it's not uh, a self, uh, how to say, uh, the idea is not just that we go buy and sell the coin there, but we wait for the usability of the coin. This coin is very, very young. We have so much way to go, but we have created miracles already. So I'm looking very, very positive into the future. But uh, remember, the internal exchange is demand and supply. So you have to find somebody who wants to sell coins to buy and the other way around. So the company itself is not obliged to buy back your coins or to sell your coins. If I don't have coins, I cannot sell them. Yeah? And as a company, we do not buy back the coins. So it's always you selling your coins to somebody else or somebody else buying from you. Don't forget also a bit the time differences when China sleeps, you're awake and so on. So sometimes, as I said, the market is not liquid and not efficient yet. And the, uh, well, then the other question is, which relate to that is that, you know, how is the value created? Now, there are two questions, I think, inside here. First is, yeah. what is the value of cryptocurrency? And the second is, how do we determine today if one coin is valued one euro, two euro, or five euro? Yes. So, um, we have a concept which is called mining difficulty. And there are calculators out there on the internet for Bitcoin. Everybody can Google them. You just Google Bitcoin mining difficulty calculator and you see how this is calculated. It's a very, very simple thing. You calculate um, one is electricity costs for the mining and the second is computer power. So to mine a coin, you need obviously a computer to do some calculations and electricity to get the computer running. So depending on these two things, uh, the mining difficulty grows or goes down. It goes both ways. It can go up, it can go down. The more miner join, however, the more people who want to mine, the higher the mining difficulty goes. Because more of them um, are in the pools. And this is, of course, what happens to one coin. So you can simulate this with these calculators. It's nothing that one coin invented. And this is how we today measure the value of the coin. Yeah? So we say, if it uh, costs us five euro to create the coin due to electricity, the servers and the computer power, this is what we think is the appropriate price. Of course, it fluctuates up and down based on demand and supply, but always in a corridor actually, that uh, we have set. So this is how we determine the price today. And the second question that you had actually is, uh, yeah, but one day we go to the open market, so how do we know what is the value of this cryptocurrency? Why is Bitcoin worth $400 and not 1000 or whatever? 
And um, here, in my opinion, there are two things how we determine the value of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is not backed up by anything. We know this. So it's actually worthless. So there's, it's not backed up by gold. It's not backed up by any other asset. Uh, one coin is not backed up. Yeah? Bitcoin is not backed up. But there's still value inside, and i tell you why. One is, first of all, the brand. Bitcoin currently have a very strong brand. Everybody knows them. They were the first one. Of course, there are always good and bad things about the brand, but they are very well known. Milk and chocolate is a very well known brand. Uh, Procter and Gamble are a very, very strong brand. So the more people joining one coin and the more people speaking about one coin, the stronger our brand becomes. And this, I think, is something that makes us really a family. Because if you go in the network marketing approach and go and sell shampoo, it does not make you stronger if somebody on a sideline sells shampoo. Only your downline makes you happy. But here, if another team makes one coin popular out there, this makes also your coin stronger and your team stronger. And then this is uh, something very, very special about one coin, I think. So the brand. And we have currently about 2 million uh, paid members. In the database, we have over 10 million people who know about OneCoin. So uh, we for sure have more users than Bitcoin, for sure. We are different, we are in a different system, but there are 2 million people who tomorrow could start using the coin if we want to. And this is great. So this is one part of the value, but um, most people use Bitcoin currently as value storage, like gold. I put it in the safe and I keep it there which is okay, but uh, a bit of a dangerous concept. Everything that goes up can also go down and you're not special. You know, and if you're not special, why use one coin? Why not use two coin, three coin, uh, dark coin, who not? So we are probably one of, of probably the only company who focuses so much on usability of cryptocurrency. Why cryptocurrency? How can it change the world? And um, our two slogans are the future of payments, or join the financial revolution. We believe that actually cryptocurrency can be a vehicle for money transfers. So for example, as you do Western Union transfers, you can use cryptocurrency to do a transfer. Fast borderless payments. And there's a huge demand for this. Two billion of people have no bank account. Two billion. Of course, we cannot capture all of them. But again, if we capture only 10 million or 100 million people, it's a network. It grows so fast. We see what happened, you know. December 2014, I was sitting at my desk and I had a bet with Per Carlson, who is not here anymore, if we will manage to have 10,000 people. And we did a huge celebration with 10,000 people. Today we have 2 million after 12 months. It is incredible. And this is the network effect. The more people know about OneCoin, the more they will come and the stronger the brand becomes. Uh. Everybody talks about MLM today, that it's pyramid, whatever you call it. For me, I have worked with this for a very long time. For me, it's uh, one of the biggest industry today in the world. But if I ask you, why did you choose to do MLM, to build this company up? I know that you have a background in financial and everything, but why did you do this? Uh, it was not an easy decision, first of all, to do uh, network marketing. Um, when I started OneCoin, my vision was to do cryptocurrency. And outside in the industry, I did not know the industry well, to be honest. I knew some people who were working there and who are either personal friends or good acquaintances, so who I trusted. But uh, what I saw in the beginning were some companies who really went bankrupt in a bad way, owing money to their members, money to their people. But I also saw some uh, mainly product-based companies who were doing a very, very good job out there and uh, an impressive um, track record. So I saw that not everybody is bad or not everybody is good. So it's um, an interesting industry. Why I chose it for my cryptocurrency? I believe that we as a cryptocurrency can be only successful if we have many users in a global network. And to be honest, I did not see a better distribution model for this. I did not see another way to attract people in, um, to the cryptocurrency and these people to be spread out geographically so well. OneCoin can work only if it does cross-border payments. So if I have OneCoin only in China or only in Europe, it will not work well. We need the emerging markets, which is 
Asia, uh, Thailand, Philippines, India, Africa, very, very interesting. These are the users of the coin. And if I would have gone in a traditional way, let's say, with an IPO, with big investment funds, these people can buy, let's say, 100 million of coins, but they keep them, they do not use them. So for me, it was more important to get many, many users, even with a small investment sum or with a small sum that they want to participate with, but um, spread out geographically. And until now, I do not regret it. It's a very competitive uh, industry. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, I see the concept misrepresented. Yeah? We, we focus mostly on education, financial education. Because in my opinion, nobody can understand cryptocurrency. Nobody can understand even the financial world out there without education. So education is our product. And some of our members choose to mine the coin. By the way, I don't know if you know, but only to the, currently I checked the numbers, about only 10% of our members mine currently the coin. Oh. Only 10%. So a lot of the people, or I think most of them, actually participate in the program for the education. And this is something that makes me really happy because this is what we are. We would like to foster a financial revolution and financial revolution always comes with knowledge, education. And um, I think this is a very, very big part of the company. Now, Pei, you asked me about the future of the network once all coins are mined. Now, I see the network um, as its own system, you know, as our own ecosystem. And um, um, I will never go and sell shampoo in this network. This will never happen because uh, I have never done a network marketing company before and I do not plan to do ever again a network marketing company. But um, the network itself is a value. It's a business that you guys are building. And for us, of course, it's also a value because we can uh, push our ideas through this network and we can do a lot of things there. So to me, the ideal future of the network is to push, even when all coins are mined, the value of the coin. Be it to attract merchants for the coin, be it to create products who are uh, connected to the value of the coin, uh, and all what this network should focus on is something that somehow enhances the value of the coin. You guys know that we did some acquisitions, actually some networks that joined us. For example, Conligos, OPN. All these networks somehow helped us to build up the coin. Either they had interesting software for us or they were geographically interested. But we never let somebody join us just because it's good or just because it's more people. We always strategically think of the future of the coin and how to make it stronger.